welcome in welcome back to another episode of the format podcast you know what it is we got some good basketball talk for you today and uh if you saw the thumbnail which i'm sure you did or you wouldn't have clicked on it you know we're going to talk some uh steve nash and the brooklyn nets this should be a short one so uh tune in and enjoy it but before i go ahead and get into that you know what we got to do make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe that like and that notification bell on your screen there so that you can be notified whenever new episodes of the show come out if you want the audio only version of the podcast just type in the format podcast in your audio uh, podcast platform do a little search and we should come right up please make sure you give us that five star review and leave a comment here on youtube or on your audio podcast platform all that helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us also if you know you uh, enjoyed the show, enjoy the out of the box thinking and not the same old stuff all the other sports shows are parroting, please go ahead and share the show with other people you know would enjoy the sports talk as well. All right, appreciate that. Let's get right to it. So, uh, Brooklyn Nets earlier this week fired head coach, former head coach Steve Nash after a two and six start to the season. So, uh, why did I find the need to comment on this? I'm sure it's been talked about ad nauseum. I'm a few days after the fact, got a lot going on, but just wanted to give my two cents on it. Um, Steve Nash, all-time great point guard, uh, Hall of Famer. We know that. He knows the game. We know that. Um, but with that said, a lot of great players have not made great head coaches. But to me, this is beyond all of that, right? Steve Nash wasn't necessarily even in line for this position. Kevin Durant, KD, the star of the Brooklyn Nets, he knew Steve Nash from his time with the Golden State Warriors, where Steve Nash was a consultant and an assistant. So um, Kevin Durant pretty much gives his stamp of approval. He wants Steve Nash to be the head coach. Uh, of course, Steve Nash uh, gets hired, right? It's the NBA. You give your star what he wants. Again, this is why I'm adamantly against giving uh, players personnel power, but that's a whole different story, right? People are going to say, oh, Bruce, you're against player empowerment. Uh, no, nah, not quite. But putting it simply, if you give players personnel power, when things go wrong, they can just walk away and raise their hands. There's no repercussion for them. Anyway, um, Steve Nash gets the job. Uh, they do a good job in his first year. I think they go 48 and 24. And um, uh, he finished sixth in uh, coach of the year voting. And then we kind of see things uh, fall apart. Um, so last year in the playoffs, the Brooklyn Nets get swept by the Boston Celtics and route to the Celtics going to the NBA Finals. Kevin Durant has a heck of a tough time, but the issue is not so much that, it's that Steve Nash um, just was poor in terms of making adjustments and finding ways to combat what the Celtics were doing defensively. For a guy who's been a great offensive mind and been around a great offensive mind in Mike D'Antoni, basically throughout his entire career um he had a tremendous amount of difficulty uh making the adjustments to counter what udoka and the celtics were throwing at his team in the playoffs now uh kevin durant of course uh demands a trade in the offseason then he backs off of the trade and in a meeting with nets owner joe Sy, basically tells them you know it's sean marks gm and steve nash i want them gone or i'm gone basically them or me and the organization, to their credit, stands up to Kevin Durant, says, that's not going to happen. You just signed an extension. You're still under contract. We're not trading you. So, <laughs> you know, you better get in uniform, get in here, and let's get going. Obviously, they didn't say it in those words. You don't want to alienate a star player in the NBA. There's no league that has more uh, power among the players than the NBA does. And it's been like that for quite some time. Not to this extent, um, but it's it's always been a player's league, right, from, you know, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, so on. But those guys, for the most part, never really flexed it the way players today do. Now, that's a whole different story, a whole different show in terms of how that's affected the game, how that's affected the league. Anyway, um, so you get a guy like Steve Nash, who I thought wouldn't be a great fit from the beginning in terms of just uh, coaching guys of that level and having such inexperience as a head coach to try and deal with that. But you know, being an all-time great point guard, you would assume the guy's a leader. He can figure it out, right? He knows how to lead. But uh, that didn't work out so well. Anyway, um, also, he, he did have some situations that, <laughs> man, I, I think the legendary Red Auerbach or Phil Jackson or, or Larry Brown or, or Coach Pop would have some difficulty dealing with in terms of you got a guy like Kyrie who 
let's call a spade a spade, is a cancer. Everywhere he's been, he's caused problems in the locker room. And we saw that again in Brooklyn. You know, we saw it with his uh, uh, his refusal to be uh, vaccinated. Now, we get it. He doesn't want to be vaccinated. He has that right. But in a team sport where these things start affecting everyone around you, it becomes problematic. Um, you also have situations where, you know, if things are bothering him, he feels like he needs to take some time off. Uh, that's also not good in a team sport where people are counting on you. Then, you know, you have James Harden who demands a trade to the Nets, comes over, it's playing well. And then once he realized Kyrie's head is not all in the game, he wants out. He demands a trade. He ends up getting traded to division rival Philadelphia 76ers. And guess who the Brooklyn Nets get back in that deal? Uh, former NBA Rookie of the Year. Uh, geez, what's this guy's name? I got Ben Simmons. Thank you. Uh, ben Simmons. They get back Ben Simmons in the deal. Ben Simmons, he, we don't know where his mind is, where his body is. Uh, obviously, he had major injuries. He also claims mental health issues. Um, it, it's all a crazy situation. He didn't play at all during his time with Brooklyn last year. Um, what, eight, nine games into the season this year, he's already dinged up no one knows what's going on so basically it's kd by his lonesome with the role players so all of this is affected was affecting steve nash a great deal so for a young head coach a guy without a lot of experience he's dealing with all these uh personalities he's dealing with all these situations and guess what it ends up being that the nets start off i think two and six this year and he gets the axe which i'm sure made kd happy because kd didn't want him there which I find so ironic because KD was the one who wanted him there and brought him there in the first place, right? He was the one who wanted Steve Nash to be their head coach. Steve Nash comes in, blah, blah, blah. You see where it all goes. This is confounding to me. So again, it comes back to, uh, for me, stop giving players personnel say so, because when it doesn't go right, there's no repercussion for them. They can wash their hands, walk away. They don't have to deal with it. It's a lot like LeBron out in LA. He wanted AD there. He did. He wanted Westbrook there. Now he got a championship out of it. But now you see that the Lakers are in the toilet and he wants to act like he didn't have anything to do with it. Come on, man. These organizations are so... It, it doesn't make a lot of sense in my estimation that these organizations are going to give these players all this power. Why? Because when it comes down to it, and now the situation is not good. The players are not winning. Everything's not working out. Guess who gets the blame for it? The organization. Well, you shouldn't have let him do it. Or, well, you shouldn't have made that trade. Or your star player's not happy and you got to deal with all that. Well, guess what? Stop putting it in their hands. Don't give them that power and you don't have to deal with it. Now, back to Steve Nash. This is a situation where Steve Nash is now finding himself without a job. But obviously, you know, he's not hurting for money. He's not. He's got plenty of time. He has been around the game a tremendous amount of time. I'm sure if he wants to continue coaching, he can go be an assistant on somebody's bench again. He can continue to learn the game and maybe down the road get another shot at being an NBA head coach. That's not the issue. But for me, the issue is Kevin Durant, you're the one who wanted him there. The Brooklyn Nets gave you what you wanted. Then you turn around and you want him fired. And then you turn around and give a statement when he gets fired. I'm shocked. I mean, you're always shocked when a move like this happens, but it's normal in the NBA. You know, so it's about getting ready for the game that, tonight. So um, it's a quick turnaround always in the league, you know, especially during the season. Um, you know, you got practice games coming up, so you can't think too much about it. But, you know, um, it was on the mind for a little bit today. Come on, man. It, it doesn't make any sense. Steve Nash was placed in a position that would be nearly impossible to deal with for almost any coach save you know, like we said, maybe some of the most legendary ones, your Red Auerbachs, your Phil Jacksons, your Larry Browns, maybe your Steve Kerr's, and maybe your Coach Pops. You know, it's it, it's a crazy situation. Anyway, what I want to know from you is, do you think that Steve Nash was treated fairly? Do you think he was put in a situation where he just couldn't win no matter what? What culpability do you think KD deserves in all of this? Go ahead, leave your comments in the comments section. Leave your comments on the audio version of your uh, podcast platform if you can. And uh, yeah, I'm out. Peace.